Hey, hey, hey. Man, I'm exhausted. So, let's talk about this new section. Section 8.2. We've been talking about confidence intervals, but now let's get this party started and get it done. So, 8.2, estimating the population proportion. Okay, so... Turn to page six of your notes, and we talked about this in class, but let's peruse through it really quickly now. Now that we are about to do this, make a confidence interval, please remember we have to have certain conditions and assumptions. Yes, it's got to be random. Yes, we've got to pay attention to our 10% rule to make sure we have a large enough sample and then not too large. And yes, we have to do the large count condition for the confirmation that it is a normal distribution. Okay, so randomness, 10%, large count condition. And what happens if it is, if we haven't met it? Well, we've kind of wasted our time. There's no point in doing the construction. Okay, also please remember um, when we're getting the standard deviation of the statistic to estimate it, Remember that the standard deviation for the statistic is also called the standard error. And you've kind of heard me go back and forth in using that terminology. And here are the equations for the standard errors or standard deviations. And they're also on our um, sheets. And remember, well, we really haven't, there's nothing to remember about this. This one's coming up soon when we talk about the T-star. But this one is what we're talking about in this particular chapter. So let's move on to, um, to page 7. Now as you look at page 7, this is just reminding you of what each of the pieces of the formula is. But I think I need to give you the formula first. So P hat, which represents the point estimate, plus or minus Z star. And Z star is the critical value. And that's going to be times P hat, which is the sample proportion, and then 1 minus P hat, which is the failure over, the, um, over N and taking the square root of that whole thing. So as I mentioned, point estimate, critical value, and standard deviation of the, um, the proportion. Now, as we're doing this, this is going to become cumbersome, and I'll be honest, some of you guys are going to hate it, but the, for those of you who are OCD, you're going to love it because it forces you to organize. Whenever we are calculating a confidence interval, and everything that we do from now on, calculating confidence intervals and doing hypothesis tests, we are gonna, it's a four-step process. We state, we plan, we do, we conclude. We state, I need to know what the population of interest is, the parameter. We plan, we have to identify the inference method. What we're gonna be doing for this one is we're gonna be doing a one proportion um, Z interval. We're going to, um, also in the plan, we have to check our conditions and assumptions. Perform the calculations. Performing the calculations mean we're gonna be using this formula. Finally, in concluding, we've got to interpret in context. So, as we move on, for problem number 28, it's just asking us to make sure that the conditions and assumptions have been met. Okay, so check whether they've been met. So, here, number 28, you notice that they um, said to you that it's an SRS of 50, so that's given, so yes, we're okay so far. Our 10% condition, our 10%, whether you're looking at a 10% of the um, entire population or 10 times the sample size, in both of those cases, um, it is going to be greater than, um, it is going to be true, so therefore, yes, the 10% 10 condition has been met. And then the last one, um, our large large count condition. Remember these are proportions so n times um, probability of success of the sample. So here we have 50 and then your success here is gonna the probability of success is 38 over 50. Okay and then we're looking here at n the sample size which is 50 times the probability of failure 
both of those are um, greater than or equal to 10. So therefore, yes, um, it the conditions for large count has been met. All the conditions here have been met. So yes, we could proceed with any tests that they want us to do. I want to show you something that the book has too in reference to this. They don't um, show the math like this. If you look at your answers, they do something like this. So for the n times p hat, they're going to say that 38 is greater than 10. Why? They did the math. Here they're going to n times 1 minus um, p hat. So the failure, that's going to be, they're just going to say that that's 12 is greater than or equal to 10. So what was the point of me showing you that? The point is, is that you see all they did was reduce, was to do some cancellation right there. So they said 38 is going to be greater than 10. And we can see where those values came from right here, right here. And then the 12 came from here and here. So the point being, if you don't want to write it down this way, you can write it down this way. It is your call, but please understand how they were able to get this. And it shows another thing. You notice that I never did the calculations of what p hat was. And it's because the reality is, honestly, half the time I don't want to. And when we do it in the calculator, you'll understand exactly why I don't want to. Okay, so, but going back to the whole ideology behind this, yes, conditions have been met, so we could proceed if we wanted to. But they didn't ask us to, so we're not. But I do want to proceed to problem on um, page 8, problem 36. So they're asking me to calculate and interpret the 95% confidence interval. So please understand, even though they're just saying to do the calculations, yes, this four-step process, state, plan, do, conclude, has to be done. Okay, so the first thing, state. Stating the population of interest. So here we're talking about the true proportion of all teens who would report texting with their friends daily. So that's your statement. Plan. And this is what I was referring to when I said, let me go back and look at my notes for a second. When I said identify the inference method. Well, this is a one sample Z interval for proportion. Okay, or we can say a one proportion Z interval. And for those of you who are thinking, well, Yarbrough, isn't that the same thing? When we start putting this thing in the calculator, this is exactly what the calculator tells us. So because of that, I personally like this one better. And it says everything. It's a one. And I should have said the word sample in here. And it's a proportion, and it's a Z interval. So it says the same thing. Um, and as we go on, you can make a decision on how you, with how, the best way you like it. So we have done what I said. We have identified the inference method. So check. Now remember, these are the conditions and assumptions: your randomness, your 10% rule, your large count condition. And as you're doing all of that. Um, we can see here they told us that we had a randomly selected number of teens. They said it right here. And then we're talking about looking at the 10% rule. We have a total sample of 799. So that's where this value came from. And I'm going 10 times n is greater, is less than or equal to the entire population of all teens. Okay. So 10% rule, check. And then my large count condition. Um, again, please notice that I'm seriously not doing the math. And I know your thoughts are, well, Yarbrough, didn't you do it right here? Yeah, I did it here because I needed to do this interval um, by hand, which is going to be a pain, but it is what it is. Okay, but going back to our point. So here is my sample size, which I mentioned above. It should have the same colors. Here is our proportion, our p hat, which is 392 divided by 799. Okay. And then here, again, we have our um, sample size times the failure, because 1 minus p hat is the failure. 
And then, you know what? I don't know what that is, but I know it's pretty huge. And honestly, I know it's greater than or equal to 10. Um, so therefore, large um, count condition, check, it has been met. Which takes us to my next step, the do. Here is our formula. The AP readers, some of them like the naked formula, some of them don't. But the reality is, for, 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 for at least a minute, for those of you who don't want to always write it down, I suggest you write it down for a while because we're going to get a lot of ugly formulas. And at least this tells you this is the formula and this is the information I need to populate that formula. Okay, so here we've got our P hat, which now, see, that's why I'm putting the, put found the decimal, 0 0.491 plus or minus. Remember, look at the bottom of your golden sheet. That is where the Z star came from for your 95% confidence interval right here. So this is based on that, which is based on, like I said, the 95% confidence interval, because that's what they've asked us for. Okay, then it's going to be these two the good things are going to be multiplied. So you can see here's the probability of success in our sample. Here's the probability of failure, so 1 minus P of this sample divided by the um, um, divided by the sample size. And then we take one big fat juicy square root. Slow and steady wins the race, guys, when you are putting this in your calculator. And when you do it, this is your output. So we've got our state, our plan, our do. Now we're going to conclude. So as we conclude, remember we are interpreting it in context. So we are 95% confident that the interval of 0.456 and 0.526 contain the true um, proportion of teenagers who would report texting with their friends daily. So that takes me to question B. So they want to know, is it plausible? Is that value that we found um, plausible? Well, well, this value right here, 0.45. Well, 0.45 is not captured. It is not contained in the interval. So in other words, it's not between the numbers of 0.456 and 0.526. And because it is not inside of that interval, it is not plausible. Um, and notice here, why did I use that term? Because they use that term. Why did I say American teens? Because they utilize the terminology American teens. And, of course, they're talking about um, daily. So, as I give you a picture of this idea, if this is your low, low, your low end interval and that's your high end interval, and this right here is 0.456, and this is 0.526, and then I've got... 0.5 out here somewhere, 0.45. This is in what we call the rejection region, for lack of a better way of saying it. We're going to figure out what that means a little later. But it is not captured inside of that. It is not con contained in that interval. Therefore, that's why it's not plausible. And then the last thing I wanted to ask here, describe possible errors, response bias. I mean, honestly, do I want to admit that I'm always doing that texting? I don't think so. And, of course, that response um, bias will, um, that is not included in the margin of error. Because what they're, the whole premise behind this question is that there are some potential errors that are not calculatable, and that is the margin of error. Um, that's the calculated part. But, yeah, it had taken, didn't take in consideration. The calculations don't take in consideration the response bias. Okay, so TTFM, ta-ta for now.